Hey guys, and welcome back to another command block tutorial. And today we're going to be spicing up our combat a little more by showing you how to make five different kinds of status effects. Now, if you're not sure what I mean when I say status effect, I am basically referring to anything that is going to be a lingering effect based on something that applied to it. So it's going to make your abilities a lot more interesting. I had your drink. Now, I want I you know, to. I know. Free. <laughs> So for today's video, we have five different status effects that we're going to be going over. The first one is Flame, followed by Frost. Then we have an Electric Static Charge, followed by a Virus, followed by a Healing Killer Totem thing. I don't really have a good name for it. However, I'm going to first demonstrate the five status effects. And mind you, I do have different weapons that are basically applying these status effects, but the focus of this video is the status effects themselves, not how I'm applying them. I really encourage you to mix and match these status effects with things in your own world. So if you have existing abilities, whether from my other tutorials, from your own creations, these are more so to complement existing things rather than the actual weapons that I'm using to apply the status effects. So just keep that in mind as we go into it. The first of these status effects we're going to be showing is Blaze, or Flame. Essentially, it ignites enemies on fire. So the way I have it set up to apply right now is that anytime I'm holding Blades, it's going to apply the Flame effect for a short duration to everything here. And if I go, boom, you can see the Flame duration. I let it build up a little bit, and you'll see it'll linger. Yeah, and that's basically how it works. It's just a lingering fire attack. and it has some cool particle effects. So that's the first one. The second one that we have is the frost effect. So essentially what we have here, and right now these mobs are frozen, I'm gonna unfreeze them for this demonstration. I'm gonna throw the snowball to apply a level of frost each time. So as soon as I apply it, you'll see the frost start moving slower. Another one, this goes slower. Now they're basically frozen. They have a different particle right here to show they're frozen. One more time and they take damage to unfreeze, which is the shatter effect. So I'm just going to shatter these guys again to kill them all. I'm just going to refreeze it for the rest of these demonstrations now. So the next one we have is sort of like an electric charge. So essentially, I'm going to apply it only to this middle husk. And he's going to have a little bit of a buildup of a charge. And he's going to explode, damaging everything in the nearby area. I'll do it again. So basically, once you apply it to one of these mobs, it becomes a ticking time bomb for everything else in the area. One of the most interesting ones is the next one, which I'm calling the virus, and you'll see why in a second. So essentially, I'm going to throw this poison, ignore those hearts, they're for something else that I accidentally clicked on. I'm essentially going to throw this poison onto these mobs, and it's going to be able to, sp it's going to be a lingering damage effect that's going to be able to spread between mobs. So you can see, I only applied it to one, and it's already wiped out nearly this entire horde. And just to give you another demonstration with a whole bunch of these guys, just to show you how deadly applying it to only one. And mind you, I am only applying it to the first husk with when I throw the splash potion. Just to show you how deadly this effect is. So you can see it's slowly spreading throughout the entire population. It's probably going to wipe out nearly all of them. Now it is on a duration, um, so that way it's not going to wipe out everything in existence, but it is, as you can see, really effective. Yeah, it's, a, it's a really fun one. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is that you can actually get sick too. You can catch these viruses. So if I throw this, you'll see I have the particle over my head too. So you are prone to all of these things. In fact, all of these status effects actually work for both players and not players. So it does mean that you are at risk of getting sick yourself so be careful with the virus and the final one that we have is a little unique in that it is a combat thing but it's not quite the way you'd expect like the other ones are if I go into adventure mode let these guys damage me a little bit now I'm gonna apply the status effects by holding this heart of the sea to build it up anytime I'm near one of these guys they're gonna heal me so essentially this status effect is really interesting because it allows you to turn 
enemies and things that are threats into something that's going to help you. So this is a really unique thing that's going to just turn your enemies into allies, essentially, even if they're not aware of it. And it can really flip the battlefield with just such a unique status effect of having enemies actually heal you. Um, yeah, that's the five effects that we have, so why don't we get into it? Now, the first of which is by far the simplest, and that is the flame. So, what we're going to do here is, by the way, all of these are using scoreboards for their timer. And essentially what we're looking at is this. So you can type this in chat, you can put it in a command block if you want. You don't have to put it in a command block, you can type it in exactly what you see here, put that in chat, and that will be fine. You just need to make sure that you've made a scoreboard be first, before you start it. If you've never used scoreboards before, I have a full tutorial on them, I recommend that you look at that. Now, what we're actually doing here is anything that has a score of flame that is higher than one, just remove one. This is going to be counting down on the duration. After that, we're going to be doing anything that has a score higher than one, meaning it has the status effect. It's going to have this little flame particle that you were seeing earlier. And finally, anything that has flame, it's going to be doing damage to, and we're going to be doing fire tick damage. Now, if you want to make it do more or less damage, as with all my damage commands, make this number higher or lower to amount the actual damage that you want to see. But as you can see, that's all we need for flame. Boom. It's the simplest one, just to kind of give you more of a demonstration of kind of how these status effects work. And just so you guys are curious how I'm applying the status effect, I have this command right here. It's just checking. If I have blaze powder in my main hand, go ahead and give the flame effect. So that's what we're going on here. And you guys are more than welcome to copy this command however you want. However, I do recommend kind of combining it with other abilities to make it more interesting. Remember, the goal of this video is not necessarily weapons in themselves, but things that you can make your weapons and abilities much more interesting. Now, the next one that we have is a little bit more interesting. It uses two scoreboards, and this is by far the most complicated out of all of them. Because like I said, we're using two scoreboards, so I'll show you these real quick. Reminder, you can put these in a command block, or you could put them in chat, but they only need to be typed out once. The way that this functions is, is that there's essentially five different levels of frost. And at the fifth level is when that damage effect that you guys saw with like the shattering, that's what the fifth level is. And yeah, the first level gets the mob slower, next level even slower, third level even slower, fourth level we change the particle, meaning that they're ready to be shattered and that they're completely frozen, and then the fifth level is what actually ends up shattering them. So for the first command that we have here, we're basically saying if the frost timer equals zero, set the frost level to zero. Because the frost timer scoreboard is how long the frost is going to last, because even if we don't reach all the way to the shatter, it's only going to be slowing them down for a little bit. And then it's just going to reset their frost level if their timer is equal to zero. The next command that we can have is going to be removing the timer from the mob every single time. And one thing I did forget to mention is that this command is on a 10 tick delay. Additionally, the flame command is on a four tick delay. Anyways, back to this one. So we have this on a 10 tick delay, and then all the chains that follow it. So this is going to be removing one from the timer every time. And this is every 10 seconds. So basically what we're going to be having, so if you have a frost timer of 10, that means the frost is going to last for five seconds. So keep that in mind when you're applying the frost. Then if the mob has a frost level of one through three, we're going to be doing the falling like snow particles that we have here. And if it has a level of four, then it's going to be doing a more solid particle that we have here. So just to demonstrate that, level one, you can see snow, level two, snow, level three, still snow, and then level four, it gets a little more solid, and that means it's ready to be shattered. So that's kind of the visual side of things, and then over here, we have the actual effects. So at frost level one, you have slowness, Frost level two, we have frost level two right here. We have a higher level of slowness. At frost level three, an even higher level of slowness. And then at frost level four, instead of slowness, we're actually doing the teleport command. And I'll show you why right here. I think this guy's too low health. 
So essentially, if I just give them one level of frost, I'm actually gonna turn this off real quick. If I give them one level of frost, so they, you can see they can still move, but I can also punch them around. So punch him, so punch him. But if he's frozen, he's actually frozen in place. And then obviously we can shatter. And that's why we're using the teleport at frost level four, because it actually freezes them in place. Now, finally, what we're doing is when they hit the frost level five, we're gonna be playing the sound random glass that makes like a ice breaking sound essentially. Following that, we're gonna be doing the damage. Anything for frost level five or higher, give it damage for freezing. Now, as with all of my damage commands, as always, if you wanna do more damage, change this number. If you want less, change this number. After that, we're gonna be setting the frost timer back to zero. And then we're gonna be doing the same thing. We're gonna be setting the frost level back to zero. So basically once you get shattered, it removes all of the frost effects. So it's kind of like this attack that you build up to, but as you're building up to it, you're also kind of slowing the mobs down. So you also kind of have a choice of, do you want to leave this enemy frozen because they're less of a threat when they're frozen? Or do you want to shatter them to deal the damage? So you kind of also have a little bit of choice with this type of status effect on how you want to use it. Now, just to go into how I'm actually applying it, like I said, I don't want... I encourage you guys to do something different, something more complex than what I'm using to demonstrate in this tutorial. These demonstrations were just made to show you guys how to use it. So essentially what we're doing is we're checking for a snowball and then we are adding to every monster nearby a frost of one. Following that, it's the exact same command except this time we're giving a frost timer of seven. And following that, we're just killing the snowball. And that's it for Frost, which is the most complicated of these status effects. So the next one that we're gonna be doing is the kind of static charge one. So as you can kind of see, I'm just gonna demonstrate this again, what's kind of happening. I'm gonna do it on this side though. I give him the status effect, there's a little bit of buildup, and then he has a big explosion that damages everything near him. I hit the fire thing. Um, and it's just really cool because it kind of makes like an enemy, you basically are turning an enemy into a weapon against its own teammates. Because now you basically turn them into a bomb. So you kind of get to use your enemies against your enemies, and it's really cool. And it has a lot of tactical play because you kind of have to think on smart ways to use it to kind of detonate it near other enemies. So on top of just being a damaging status effect, it's one that kind of makes you think a little bit more on how to use it well. So first of all, type this in chat as per usual. Then we're gonna be doing the same thing that we did with the other timers, except this one is actually not the same because instead of removing one, we're gonna say, if the charge is one or higher, you're actually going to add to it. And the reason being is unlike the other ones, this isn't a duration. Instead, once we apply the effect, it builds up and then blows. So if we go back in here, you can see we're actually adding it, and this one's very unique compared to the other status effects I'm showing in this video. The next one that we're gonna have is just the sound that you guys are hearing as it's charging up. So when charge is between one and six, that means it's currently building up for the explosion, but it's not exploding yet. Similarly, we're also gonna be running this critical hit emitter that kind of shows which mob is actually building up and about to blow up. Following that, we have the random dot explode sound for when the mob hits the charge level of seven. And seven is the number that we chose to have the actual explosion be at. I should also mention that this is on a seven tick delay. Yes, so we have the random explode. Then we are using the camera shoot explosion to represent the actual explosion. Then of course we have the damage command. Now there's a few things I wanna, mo I wanna mention here. Uh, you can obviously change this number as per usual. However, you might also want to change this number. This is the radius. If you want it to hit more mobs in a bigger area, make this number bigger. If you want it to be smaller, you want it to hit less mobs or less of an area, make this number a lot smaller. That's up to you guys, but it gives you a lot of customization when you guys are making these status effects in your own worlds. Finally, we have the charge reset. So after it hits seven, after it's 
done the explosion, it's going to set the charge back to zero. Simple as that. Now, in the way that I'm applying it for the demonstration, just so you guys see, we're essentially checking for an egg, and then it's going to set just the closest monster to a charge of one. Now, I have it set to only apply to monsters. However, just a reminder, all these status effects will work on all kinds of mobs, including players. So just keep that in mind. I'm only demonstrating on monsters for the moment. Then we're following with a conditional command that kills the egg. All right. For the next one, which is the big virus that we were kind of showing off, there's a lot of customization you can do with it. And you can see it's actually not that much more complicated than like the flame one is. So first of all, we're making the virus scoreboard. As per usual, same as the other ones. Then what we're going to be doing is this might look a little bit complicated and there's a lot you can customize within here. Uh, and I'll show you guys that in a second. But for now, we're just going to look at this. So I have it set so it's going to choose two random things that have virus. So that means their virus score is one or higher. And we're using C equals two, which means we're choosing only two. And we're using at R, which means random. Then we're using a scoreboard player's operation. And I'll kind of explain how this works in a second to choose once again, two random mobs that are not items within a five block radius. And it's going to set their virus score equal to the original virus score. This is so that the virus still has a limited duration, even though it's spreading. So if I set the virus of a mob to 10 for 10 seconds, it's going to last for 10 seconds as a whole, like that specific virus is only going to last for 10 seconds which I know sounds kind of complicated, but this way the virus isn't infinitely chaining. And I know this command looks complicated, so you might want to copy it exactly how you see it. If you want to slow down the rate of spread of this virus, you want to make it slower. Uh, you can change this to one or technically you can just delete it. And you could also change this to one. So this is how many things is it going to be spreading from and how many things will it be spreading to. So if you also want to make it spread faster, you could make this a higher number. You can make it all the way up to seven or something like that. And same over here, you can just make this a much higher number. There's a lot of customization you can do to actually affect the rate of spread within these commands. And one thing I should mention is that this is also only 10 tick delay. Following that, we have the same old, same old, where we are just removing one score from the virus. This is essentially the timer, so that way it does eventually wear out. Next up is the particle. So similar to the flame, similar to the other particles that we were using, if it has a virus score that's higher than one, meaning it has the virus, then it's just gonna put some soul particles above the entity's head. And finally, the damage of the virus itself. So anything that has virus, just give it a damage of five. That's all. And as per usual, you can change the damage numbers. However, one thing that I would like to point out is if you actually have the damage numbers really high, so I'm just going to get 30, so it instantly kills a husk. Now you remember how big of an area it wiped out last time I did it from just a single mob having the virus. So I made it so the damage is enough to one hit any mob. However, because of that, it doesn't really spread. It spreads a little bit, gets a couple of mobs, but because it kills them so fast, it doesn't actually spread that well. So if I were to make it just, uh, we'll say 12, which will two hit the mobs, you'll see it's gonna spread a little bit better. Or actually a significantly more number of mobs die because it spreads faster. So I would just keep that in mind when you're messing around with the damage commands here, a lower number is going to make it better at spreading. So just keep that in mind. All right, and finally, I will actually I will show you how we apply it it's exactly the same as what we had earlier. So checking for a splash potion. If so, set a monster, the closest one, to a virus score of 20. Finally, kill the splash potion. That's it. Now for the final one, which is the healing aura, which turns bombs basically into healing pillars for you, which I still think is just a really interesting mechanic. What we're going to be starting out, make the scoreboard, same as everything else. Following that, we're going to basically have the same timer that we've had every single time. Following that, the same particle that we've had every single time. 
I'm not going to go deep into these explaining these commands because I've explained them with the other status effects. The only thing that's unique about this status effect is that instead of a damage or anything like that, you're going to be using an execute for anything that has the healing effect, meaning the score is higher than one. It's going to run the effects command for all players. Now this time it's specifically players within four blocks. It's going to give them instant health times for one second. And this technically means it's in health one, not zero, but we have to write it at zero because of the way the commands are. So essentially it's very similar to the flame to all the other ones. The only difference is that instead of damage, it's going to be using an execute and then a instant health effect. Similar, it's almost exactly the same as the flame. Anytime I'm holding the heart of the sea in my hands, uh, it's going to give the heal like timer to everything within 10 blocks that's not an item. This actually is how it works. Once again, I'll just kind of demonstrate what this looks like in adventure mode. As it's damaging me, you can see I can actually just run up to this dude. And because he has this lingering effect, he becomes a healing totem for me. So really useful and it also kind of makes combat a lot more interesting because there's a lot of different ways that you can now turn enemies basically into your allies, which is really useful in a lot of ways. So once again, just a final encouragement, these are not designed for you to just copy and paste. I really encourage you guys to add them to your own creations to make your combat a lot more interesting. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments, but it is better if you join our Discord because uh, you'll get a lot more responses a lot quicker that way. And also our Discord is just a really good place to be. Joining the Discord also means you'll have access to my really cool superhero route, which I've been live streaming a lot of. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys found this informative. And...